G'day, my name is Luke, and this is my wife, Jen. And here are our two growing boys, Liam and Elliot. We've been fishing, boating, and exploring the pristine waters of the Fraser Coast for about 10 years now. So subscribe and come join the adventure. G'day folks, Luke here. Thanks again for watching. Well, the kids have got birthday parties today, and it's Saturday, the boat ramp's pretty busy. So I've decided to just come out for a few hours for a really easy fish. Um, Harvey Bay, just over there, Riverheads. I'm on the flats of Fraser Island. I'm basically south of Kingfisher Bay Resort and I'm just gonna make my way all the way down through to about Ungawa, just fishing along the flats, fishing different drains and creeks and things. Um, maybe I can get myself some flathead tails or something for dinner just want to keep it really really simple today uh, I'm going to try a few different coloured lures so that's the atomic semi hards vibe again uh, but I'm going to go with the silver and it's got a sort of a purple hue in it today and I've got a few soft plastics on as well which I'll show you later on during the day and I'm just going to move around using the encoder up in the shallows casting clock ray method like I usually do um, bang, 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 bang with one lure, swap, bang, 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 and then move. Um, and just look for shadow, stingrays, yabby holes, and things like that. So let's see if we can turn up any fish. There you go folks, beautiful, only a little guy, he's only just legal, uh, Fraser Coast Flathead. Hit like a steam train though, uh, made a good account of himself. Hopefully I can find a bigger model to take home for dinner. But uh, just shows you come onto the flats of Fraser Island and you can find yourself a bit of a feed. This guy is legal so I could take him but I'm not going to. Uh, I want him to grow to about 50 or 60 and then he'd be absolutely perfect so anyway we're getting back in the water so one thing i'm noticing today folks is the water up here in the shallows is extremely clear and i've had three or four follows of the lure um, nothing big following them yet just just small fish so far but that would be that one i just released um oh but really uh really flighty like they're they're really looking at the lure hard um oh there's something chasing this yeah i don't think he's big i have noticed there's a lot of bar tail flathead around at the moment in that sort of 20 to 30 centimeter range they're the ones with the really distinct bars on, on the yellow tail. So I'm pretty sure, I'll give it another few minutes, but I think I'm gonna have to drop leader size. Oh, what's that? I don't know if that's weed or... I'm fouled up, I think. All right, it's come good. Um, so yeah, there's, they're really flighty because of the clarity of the water, I think. They're not being super aggressive. The rockfish are being super aggressive though, like that thing hit like a steam train. <sighs> it's actually shell. <sighs> I'll tell you what. Glad I had the drag set for that. Got the vibe on at the moment. I'm just single hopping the vibe. Just like a soft plastic. Just I sort of feel the vibration as it comes up. Let it go back down the bottom and rest. Not having much luck up here on that real shallow stuff. So I might 
go back down to about a half metre to a metre. I find generally along these flats, I really love fishing them about an hour. Oh, that was a. I really love fishing them about an hour after low tide. Oh, it's so hard with this vibe to know if it's just catching on the bottom when I lift it or if it's actually something. Because this. This biting so light. So there's a line of bait actually along this sort of level. And the small fish I have landed this morning have been sitting underneath that. So I sort of want to get away from the smaller fish though, because the smaller fish, the, sm the smaller fish, I mean the big flathead wheat, the smaller flathead. So I don't know what's going on here out up again I think. One is a bit of weight so it's pretty a rock. Um, so I want to sort of get away from the smaller flathead because the big flathead eat them so the smaller ones aren't going to be oh, another giant, another Fraser Coast giant. Um, small ones generally aren't going to be hanging around too much where the big ones are unless, unless it's sort of that spawning period. I think I'll circle around, come back through just below that bait line and uh, try that. So it looks like coming a little deeper work. This guy's a bit fasty. Man, a weight to him. Yeah, he's a good fish. hooked him right in the eye by looks at it. He's legal so I'll probably take him home just because he's a bit damaged. Know, folks. This guy's uh, coming home for dinner. He's mid 50s. Uh, coming out into that deeper water definitely works. I'm in about a metre of water now. I did see a lot of, I was spooking a lot of them up in the shallows but they were a lot smaller than this guy. Sort of that 30 through to 40 mark. And a lot more bar tails up there I noticed. This guy uh, smash that atomic grog uh, it actually hooked him in the eye uh, we'll talk about that when I uh, start casting for the next so I was going to talk about um, same with all fishing folks check your check your leader check your knot after a fish check the hooks stuff like that uh, everything looks pretty good on this this is uh, this is about 10 pounds so might have to drop, I'm not quite sure, not convinced yet. Anyway, um, I was going to talk about that fish getting hooked on the top of the head essentially, up near the eye. Um, I find that a lot with flathead. Um, sometimes they just do a nice clean hook up. They'll, uh, they'll hit a lure and it'll get them nice and caught in the, in the edge of the mouth, generally with a jig head with a soft plastic. But a lot of the time, They'll get hooked up behind the gills or on top of the head or something or around the side of the head uh, because of this blind spot. Now there's a lot of people out there with different theories about it. Um, I'm no scientist so I don't know for sure but I've definitely caught a lot of flathead and there's a lot of those hookups um, around those areas of the fish and I think it is to do with a bit of a blind spot. I think the way their eyes are positioned, they're ideal for sitting on the bottom and looking up. But I think they have a bit of a blind spot when they get really close to something. Um, and that's probably why they, they're so aggressive in the strike. They probably just throw everything at it. Hope to get it down in that big mouth of theirs. So sometimes pausing your lure, like, that's probably why I like prefer using 
a single hop retrieve because it really does sort of pause the lure at the top of the hop and then as it's going down it really does pause the lure and gives them time to really strike at it not exactly a giant but a fish nonetheless Beautiful. So he's just under 40. Another one just under 40. Sorry about the shadow. In that way. So yeah. The shallower I come, the smaller they get. The bigger ones seem to be hanging a bit deeper at the moment. Hello right folks. So I promise I always show you the good, the bad and the ugly, all right? So uh, nothing wrong with the motor, but I've got a problem with my steering. I've just uh, been fishing the flats all day. Go to turn the uh, ignition. And I meant to do that. So it's definitely the steering. It's uh it goes quiet and then it will just start again for no reason. I still have steering. Steering still nice and light. Do I trust it or don't I? <laughs> Rightio. So, I think, to me it sounds like uh, the, the steering in the power, the power steering motor or whatever it is, it might be a pump or something, is just initiating for some reason. It thinks it needs to initiate and be used when it doesn't, and it is. And it seems to just rev really high and then go back down and whatever. So, I'm going to take it very easy on the way home. Uh, because the biggest risk, obviously, is I lose steering at speed. I don't think that'll happen. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is some, something as simple as a sensor or something like that that's telling the pump what to do is malfunctioning. So the motor still works, starts fine. No issue with the motor. Uh, it's definitely... It's definitely the steering. So, let's see if we can get home. Can't, it, it's not grinding or, like it's actually stopped now. So maybe it's a dirty sensor or something just starting to play up a touch. I, I, I can't feel any issues with steering. All right. We'll give it a go, we'll crawl back. I'm gonna just bunny hop basically. I'm gonna go from here to Duck Picnic Island. I'll stop, just check it, make sure everything's good. Uh, and I've got a high tide so I can shoot down the inside of Big Woody. Um, I'll stop at Round Island, just check again. And if everything seems okay, I'll just go straight into the ramp. And then uh, I'll take it down to the boys down at uh, Harvey Bay Marine Services and say, what the, what is going on? Right, anyway, so I've made it to, that's Duck Island. All right, 
Now, if you ever come past Duck Island while you're here on the Fraser Coast, you'll notice there's an old ranger station on it. Um, you can get off and have a look on there. The only thing you really need to watch around here is the other side of it is a green zone. So anyway, I've made it here. I was sitting on 3,800 RPM, just doing my normal cruising speed. The steering feels really loose, but it's working and the noise has actually stopped. So maybe it just might've been crap on a sensor or something. I'm not sure, but uh, <clears throat> I'll take it easy on the way home. I'll still take it down to the boys to have a look at on Monday. Well, I'll give them a call on Monday anyway. Okay, so we made it. that's uh, Round Island just over there. And then you got the Yurangan Pier in the background. That's uh, Big Woody Island. And there's uh, home base, Harvey Bay in the, the harbour. Everything seems to have run really well on the way home. So I'm really not sure what's going on. Um, I turned the motor off. This is when I'm trying to replicate the problem. So I was on the flats, had the motor off all day. Doesn't, doesn't seem to be doing it anymore. Which is good. Um, but I'll, I'll give Maddie at Harvey Bay Marine Services a call on Monday anyway, uh, just to see what, what he recommends. I dare say they, you know, they wanna be safer rather than sorry. And they do do a good job. So um, I dare say they wanna have a look at it. Uh, hopefully it's just a dirty sensor or something like that. That's what my gut tells me it is. But then again, inside that steering stuff, there could be stuff going everywhere. Who knows? So, it's a little clunky. A little clunk. A little clunk and then it kicks in. All right, let's just get home. Join us next week to find out exactly what happened with our steering and also if we make it back out onto the water. Hope to see you then.